Hi everyone, this is Theo from Belgium. This time, this is part four, if you wish, uh, from my series of videos on the unofficial camper editor. By now, it has reached the 1.32 mark, and uh, Damien has added uh, a myriad of new functions to the editor. He has also given it a new name. I guess the KPA FX editor was uh, not covering uh, the load anymore uh, since Initially, Damien uh, developed this piece of software to get uh, easier access to the effects section, but it has uh, evolved into so much more. And he has also made some changes to the interface. So in this video, I will go through uh, all the new stuff and also uh, to the, I will also explain some of the new added functionality. Once uh, the connection is established uh, here in the MIDI uh, part of the Toast Me editor, you can. Uh, Select your device in the input section and the output section and make sure it's active uh, with the little smiley face here. If you're not aware, check out the other videos. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the description uh, or in the comments below and I will try to answer them. Uh, okay, now the first part I would like to discuss is uh, Damien has added some tabs here on top. So you can go to the amp. This is familiar ground for those who have already used the Toast Me editor uh, in previous incarnations. Uh, nothing really has changed here except uh, he has added some performance buttons, which I will explain later. Then he has the input uh, section, uh, the output section, the system section, and the profile section. In the input section, he has added all uh, functionality here, the clean sense, distortion sense, reamp sense dials, and, and the noise gate, which is nice. And here you can uh, choose which uh, input you would like to use uh, for the camper. In the output section, uh, Damien has uh, included all controls uh, for the main out, the monitor out, the direct out, the headphone out, and the spit out. So all those controls here, volume, bass, middle, travel, presence, for the main, for the monitor, it's all listed here, directly available in the interface, and also a drop-down list uh, so that you can choose what kind of uh, path you are sending to the main out, and when you are sending to the monitor out, the direct out, spit it out, and so on. Uh, also, he has added a headphone volume controller here, and also has added the space controls. Very nice indeed. And then in the system tab, he has the looper volume listed and you can just put it pre or post. And in the profiler, uh, he has the listen button here available so we can switch between AMP and KPA. As you can see, uh, I have also a Kemper cam uh, in this overview. So if you click on a button, it will just change uh, buttons accordingly on the hardware interface as well. Okay, let's uh, get this uh, thing working, shall we? So uh, make sure connections are good. And then Damien has added uh, another color scheme. So it's more clear when your camper is connected or not. When it says connect with a red button, it means it's not connected. So if you click this button and you have hooked up your uh, MIDI in a good way, you should be able to connect to the camper and uh, you should get the loaded or the selected profile on your camper loaded into the interface. And also the button will turn green. Now, as you can see, Damien has also added the slot buttons here on the left-hand side from A to D, and on the right-hand side from X to uh, Reverb. Uh, he has also added uh, the names underneath those buttons. So the white buttons enable you to quickly bypass or activate a uh, selected slot. And the button underneath not only reflects what type is loaded, which effects type is loaded in this particular slot, but allows also, if you click on this, to go directly to the selected slot. So if you want to go to the distortion slot, you click on the distortion slot, and it will automatically load the effect in that particular slot. Same goes for the X delay and reverb button. So on off bypass, as you can see, sometimes uh, it does not respond directly. So just click again. Uh, there are some minor bugs that they will take care of in the coming weeks, I guess. But uh, no biggie here. Uh, if something doesn't work directly, try it again. Uh, here also, mark on, off, delay on, off, and so on. 
you want to go to the time delay section, just click the delay name. You can uh, choose another effect if you want. Uh, let's try this. And of course, the new uh, name will appear here in the box underneath and also the color scheme to match. So let's get back to our delay section, shall we? Uh, uh, let's go and use uh, single delay, dual delay, whatever. Uh, and it will change accordingly. Okay, very nice feature indeed. So if you go to your next rig, for instance, here, you can automatically uh, see what, what effects are loaded into which slots. So very handy indeed. It will make your life very easy if you want to change your uh, rigs. Instead of going through the hardware interface and the dial, you can just go directly to the uh, effect slot uh, in question and turn it on, turn it off. Of course, you can turn it on up here, or you can use the button and uh, it will uh, match accordingly. All right, the last thing I would uh, like to show to you is uh, Damien has added the five uh, performance buttons here. If you want to use those performance buttons, you just go to the Kemper editor and you put it in performance mode. And here is my main performance uh, based on a Mark V. And if you go to slot one, it will load in the selected slot uh, from your performance, which is nice. So if you change anything here, it will be stored in that performance. So two, three, four, and uh, since I have, uh, I do not have the camper remote. I use the Voodoo Labs uh, Ground Control Pro. Uh, I'm uh, limited to four patches per uh, performance, but it works great nonetheless. So uh, let me give this a quick listen. I go to number one. It should load up my clean profile, which it does. Of course, these are live profiles, so they are not really for studio work but they work very nicely on uh, the front of house and on the, my uh, Marshall cab, so uh, it's uh, great. Very nice sound. So if I go to the second performance here, second slot, and I... This is my main rhythm, rhythm patch, uh, which is nice. And I have a lead patch, which uh, just adds some delay, as you can see, and just boosts the middle a little bit and travel a little bit. Very nice. Uh, and then I have a solo patch, which is basically the same as my lead patch, only with some added volume, as you can see. Um, so the difference between three and two or four is the rig volume boost, so, which is nice. Just to stand out of the band. Don't kill your audience though, so uh, it can translate very nice to our front of house, so your solo can be heard to everyone. So uh, don't exaggerate on the volume, people. Uh, just make a nice balance uh, in the sound of your band. So. Very nice indeed. So you are not only limited to a uh, browser mode, you can also uh, get things done in the performance mode. So if you are uh, using uh, these buttons, you can also uh, use these buttons to go to the next uh, performance. And here you will see it will load the different performances uh, just quite nicely by using the uh, editor here. So this is a tri-axis, rhythm patch, trunk. Very nice. Also Metallica. Very nice. As you can see, it's fully loaded with a wah. Uh, if I go to wah, it is a uh, bypass I feel. It's a nice wall setting that I had from the forum and it works great on lead work. Uh, it has an octaver, it has a phaser, uh, and if I activate that, it gives you nice. Right. 
gives a nice bass sound. Of course, uh, you can beef it up if you want to by engaging the distortion. It's a green screen loaded. So nice off. On. Give some nice definition. And so on. Very nice. Uh, also, a okay, which is handy if you're a loud stage player like me. Uh, and I have also added the cue with low cut and the high cut around 6000 hertz. The dial is reflecting very nicely uh, how much cut you do. So uh, it goes from 13,000 to 6,000, but it only, you see, it's uh, it's working marvelously. Uh, also, a uh, delay, which I can engage at will. <laughs> And of course, the reverb, which I can engage, disengage. Very nice. Let's get it all on, shall we? <laughs> Plain overfill, but you get the idea. It's uh, very easy to uh, use this software uh, without even to have to touch the camper. You don't. Great. So, um, for me, the only thing lacking now is uh, the morph button. Uh, I hope uh, it will be included in this editor as well, because I have some uh, patches here. For instance, uh, in my main uh, patch, uh, let's, let's go, take some time, Oops. go down, go down, go down. There we go. And let's do the first one. There we go. It's nice. But I have to add the quick button. I assigned it to my morph state. So um, with my morph in, the, in this clean patch, I can go from regular clean to some kind of Some uh, more uh, phaser like sound for intros uh, and so on. So, uh, very nice. It would be nice if this would be available here in some kind of button morph or whatever. Uh, but for now, I just assigned a quick button to the more state, so uh, it's working quite nice as well. So, uh, performance work mode working uh, very nicely indeed. As you have noticed, uh, maybe in the video, sometimes uh, these buttons. Since the Toast MIDI editor needs to get all its data from MIDI and uh, via C6 uh, messages, sometimes it can take a while until the interface responds. But don't worry, everything works. It will not harm your camper at all. So um, I guess it's, uh, it's a wrap. Uh, thank you again, Damien, for all your effort. Uh, this editor is uh, has been working marvelously for me, uh, especially uh, I've been using these lock states a lot um, for uh, uh, trying out different caps, trying out different amps in existing rigs uh, to go through my uh, entire collection uh, by using the software. It's so, so damn convenient. I hope uh, this has been useful some, uh, for some of you. If you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them as quickly as I can. Just one more thing. Uh, the first thing you set up the software, the first time you set up the software, the lock states, uh, the clear lock, the cab lock, and the amp lock may not work. That's because uh, it needs to have a direct access to those uh, parameters right from the start. So once you have set up your MIDI connection, I uh, advise you to restart the toaster, well, the toast MIDI editor, and uh, this clear lock, cab lock, and amp lock will just work fine. One last favor I need to ask you guys is uh, head over to this donate button and uh, give uh, Damien 
some well-deserved uh, support here uh, for creating this uh, magnificent, magnificent tool all by by himself. Uh, I have looked to the code. It's it's. Uh, uh, I am a coder, but uh, this is quite something. So uh, um, big thumbs up for you, Damien. Uh, this is marvelous. So uh, the help file you will see it's the Toast Me 1.32 uh, version by uh, Damien Greta. And here you have the link to the uh, Toast Me editor. So if you click on that, it will open up uh, the Facebook page uh, with uh, all activity concerning the editor. So I hope uh, uh, everything is uh, clear. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, I hope to catch you guys in the next one. Bye.